Alright, so welcome to another one of my brain teasers. I don't know how many of you watched the Olympics this past summer, but I especially enjoyed watching all of the track and field events, so I thought it would be fun making a brain teaser related to sprinting. Alright, so here in this brain teaser we have 25 sprinters, and only 5 sprinters are allowed per race. And the question that we need to find out is, can we find the top three or the fastest three sprinters in just seven races? Okay, and there's no stopwatch allowed, so you don't know the exact time of any of the sprinters. Uh, the only thing that we know is who gets first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. All right, so the question is, can you find the top three sprinters in just seven races? Um, you can also assume that each sprinter runs exactly the same speed from one race to another. So if he runs one speed in one race, you can assume that if you use him in another race, he'll run the exact same speed. So, all right, so I think you get the idea. Take your time. Think about this brain teaser. When you figure it out, uh, come back to this video, and we will go over the solution together. All right, so we're starting with 25 sprinters, and there's only five sprinters allowed per race. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to separate it into five different races, each having five sprinters in each race. And you can see that I labeled each race using letters. The first race is race A, second race is race B, so on and so forth. All right, so now let's label each runner for all of the races. And I labeled each runner with a number and a letter. The number represents which place they finished, and the letter represents which race that they're in. So runner 1A is the first place finisher from race A. Runner 2B is the second place finisher from race B. Runner 3C is the third place finisher from race C. I think you get the idea. All right, so at this point, we've already used five out of the seven races. And the question is, who do we pick to run in the sixth race that will give us information about who the fastest three runners are? So the people who are actually going to pick to run in the sixth race are actually all of the first place winners. So I'm going to pick all of the first place winners to run in the sixth race. And the reason why I do that is because it's going to give us a lot of information about who the fastest three runners are and who are not the fastest three runners. All right, so here I picked all of our first place finishers from the first five races to run in our sixth race. And let's assume, just to make things more simple, it doesn't have to be this way, but I want to make it as simple as possible. Let's assume that runner 1A finishes first place in this race, runner 1B uh, finishes second place in this race, 1C gets third place, 1D gets fourth place, and 1E gets 5th place. So at this point, I don't know if you realize this yet, we actually know a lot of information. Uh, let's take a look at this runner 1E. Okay, We know that he finished 5th place in this race, so we know that for a fact he's not a top 3 runner. All right, Because he finished 5th place in this race. So he's not a top 3 runner, so we can cross him off the list. All right, so I'll cross them off over here as well. We know 1E is not a top three runner. Um, but what does that tell us about runner 2E? We know that 1E is not a top three runner, and we know that 2E is slower than him, so we can cross out 2E as well. Same thing for 3E. We know that 2E is not a top three runner, and we know that 3E is slower than him, so we can cross him out. And I think that you get the idea by now. So we can cross out every single person from race E. All right, now let's take a look at runner 1D. He finished fourth place in the sixth race, so we know that at best, he's the fourth fastest runner. He's definitely not top three, so we can cross him off the list. And I'll cross out 1D off the list over here as well. And so what does that tell us about runner 2D? If 1D is not a top three runner, and 2D is slower than him, we know that for a fact he's not top three as well, so we can cross him out, 
And I think you get the idea by now. We can cross out every single person from race D. All right, so now let's take a look at runner 1C. We know that he finished third place in this race. So it is possible that he is a top three runner. We don't know it for sure, but it's possible that he could be a top three runner since he finished third place in this race. So we're just going to circle him and we're not going to cross him out. But now let's take a look at runner 2C. We know at best runner 1C is a third place. So that means at best runner 2C could be fourth place. So that means if he's fourth place, he's not a top three runner, we can cross him out. And if 2C is not a top three runner, then we know for a fact 3C, who's slower, is not top three. 4C is even slower than 3C. He's definitely not top three. So on and so forth. So now let's take a look at runner 1B. We know that he finished second place in this race, so it's definitely possible that he could be a top three sprinter. So I'm going to circle runner 1B because it's definitely possible that he could be a top three finisher. So what do we know about runner 2B? We know that 1B could be at best a second place finisher. So that means that runner 2B, who's slower than him, can be at best a third place finisher. So it is possible that 2B could be a top three finisher. Now let's take a look at runner 3B. We know that 2B is at best a third place finisher. So that means 3B is at best a fourth place finisher. So he's definitely not top three. We can cross him out. And if 3B is not top three, we know that 4B, who's slower, is definitely not a top three runner. So on and so forth. So now let's take a look at runner 1A. We know that runner 1A finished first place in this race, and we know that he finished first place in race A as well. Uh, so what does that tell us? All right, so we know that he's faster than every other person in his own race, race A, and we also know that he's faster than every other first place finisher from race B, C, D, and E. So he's the fastest person in his own race, and he's faster than every other first place finisher. So based on that information, we, can, we know that runner 1A is the fastest person out of all 25 runners. So I'm making this little squiggly circle around 1A just to symbolize he is our number one runner. He is the fastest guy. So what does that tell us about run, runner 2A? If we know that 1A is the fastest guy, at best, runner 2A could be the second fastest guy, so it's possible he could be top three. So I won't cross him out. What does that tell us about runner 3A? All right, if runner 2A is at best the second fastest, runner 3A, 3A is at best the third fastest, so he could be top three. We won't cross him out. All right, and 4A is at best the fourth fastest runner, so we can definitely cross him out. He's not top three. 5A at best the fifth fastest runner, so we can definitely cross him out. All right, so at this point, we've already used six out of our seven races. So the question is, who is going to run in our last race so we can find out who the top three sprinters are? All right, so who are we going to pick in this last race? It would be a really bad idea to pick runner 1A to be in our last race because we know that runner 1A is the fastest guy. We know for a fact already that he is the number one runner. So since we know that he's the fastest guy, we don't need to know how fast he is anymore. We don't need to see him in another race. And if you count the total number of people that are left that aren't crossed out, there's only five other runners. All right, we have runner 1C, we have runner 1B, we have runner 2B, 2A, and 3A. Um, so that makes it easy for us to figure out who the second fastest guy and the third fastest guy is. All right, so we're going to pick all these runners that I just checked off in red. We're going to pick them to run in our last race. And just to make things more simple, we're going to assume that this runner 1C 
gets first place in this particular race, 1B gets second place in this race, 2B gets third place, 2A is fourth, and 3A gets fifth. All right, so at this point, we should know who our top three sprinters are. Uh, from earlier, we've already determined that our runner 1A is the fastest. We already knew we already knew that he was the fastest sprinter out of all 25. All right, and out of our remaining five that I checked off in red, we know that runner 1C is the fastest because in race G he got first place. So we know that 1C is the fastest out of the remaining five. So we know that 1C is our second place or our second fastest sprinter. So I'm going to do a little squiggly line around him just to show that he's the second. And out of our remaining four that I've checked off in red, we have 1B, 2B, 2A, and 3A. We know that 1B is the fastest out of those four. Because of race G, he got second place. So we know he's faster than 2B, 2A, and 3A. So we know that runner 1B out of the remaining four that I checked off is the fastest, so that means he is our third fastest sprinter. So now we have determined who our fastest three sprinters are. It is 1A, 1B, and 1C. I hope you enjoyed this brain teaser. If you want to see some more, please subscribe and stay tuned because I will be posting some more in the near future. And until my next video, I will see you later.